So welcome to the EV Group here at Semicon West. I'm joined by Dr. Thomas Ehrman. Uh, Nice to see you, uh, Thomas. Uh, Thank you, yeah, nice to see you too. <laughs> great. So I want to start by talking about uh, the heterogeneous integration uh, lab that you set up about three years ago. Yeah. Uh, tell us a little bit about that, how it works, and uh, you know what sort of work you're doing there. Right. So actually this uh, heterogeneous integration competence center, how we call it, it's kind of, it's the second competence center that we, that we have spun out. So mm -hmm. it's uh, actually where it, where it's directed at, so we wanted to fill a gap in between, so uh, mainly bringing up new packaging technologies for heterogeneous integration and being right the step stone from development to actually production ready processes. Right. And that's mainly directed, it started with wafer to wafer bonding, of course. That's, yep. the, that's the process where we have a, a huge install base, by far market leader, so approximately 80% uh, what we have currently as a, as a market lead. Mm -hmm. And in the end of the day, yeah, so for wafer to wafer bonding, there were still a lot of questions open. And, and as you know, hybrid bonding is, is one of the hot, hot topics right now, 3D yeah, integration. Yep. Um, and actually, so the goal is really to have an incubator for our customers, right? So they have with, uh, with a, a known infrastructure, we know how hybrid bonding works. We can accelerate their developments by far. And they don't have to invest at the beginning already for a certain type of hybrid bonding process. Right. And so what we see today, for example, wafer to wafer was was great. So mm -hmm. it was really one of the drivers, yeah. openers of this market. It enabled fusion and hybrid bonding in fabs. So there is no foundry of fab out there that does not have equipment for From. wafer to wafer hybrid bonding already. Yeah. And now it's the next inflection point will actually be die to wafer hybrid bonding. And there is really a, a gap in the industry how to do it. And so Heterogeneous Integration Competence Center is, is actually right in this, uh, should actually go right into this direction to bridge for die to wafer hybrid die bonding. Die to wafer. Between, okay. Yeah. And so so the, the, the companies that you, you work with, I mean, you've obviously got the equipment sets to help them, but I mean, you're fairly agnostic when it comes to the materials that they use. Exactly. Yeah. So mm. that's actually the goal, right? So we want to be very free. Um, actually, it should be. What we want to have is that every customer is coming in, and it's uh, yeah, it's it's kind of a custom fit for the customers, right? So mm -hmm. none of the customer is the same. So they all have different requirements, different expectations to a project, different length of the project, um, and we are customizing for each and every customer, we are customizing the projects, how, right. how they are running best and how they're working best for them, right? right? Yeah. right. So, so, so you're doing the, the, the die to wafer, but you're also doing the, the uh, flip chip bonding uh, and, and looking at other processes too. Right, so we have also like complementary processes that we are needing, for example, to, in the, when, when we talk, for example, about die to wafer bonding, mm -hmm. die to wafer bonding, there are right now two major processes which are competing, not competing, which are complementary, I would say. So on the one hand side, it's a process called collective die to wafer bonding, where you're populating a carrier wafer. Okay. And then you're treating that carrier wafer same as it would be a normal wafer. So mm -hmm. you're using uh, state-of-the-art wafer to wafer bonding equipment. Yeah. And then you, you mainly do it for integration of compound semiconductors, for example. Um, and then there is a second process that is called direct placement die to wafer bonding, or sequential bonding, how, yeah. how it's also called sometimes in the industry. In the end of the day, <coughs> the goal is to really pick the die clean and place the die directly. Directly. Right? And it all comes with different difficulties, mm -hmm. um, how to master these processes. And so that, that's something that we, are, that we are doing in this center. Um, but EV Group has always been a wafer manufacturer, so we are doing equipment right. for wafer manufacture and wafer processing, mm -hmm. and not for die placement, for example, the pick right. and place equipment. That's not what we are doing. Right. And so we formed here a JDP, for example, that was going public last year with ASM Pacific Technology. Mm -hmm. They're supporting us with their equipment okay. and uh, co-developing here a complete solution for customers. Right, yeah. right, right. Okay, so so you, ASM Pacific are coming in with their with their die exactly. bonding stuff. Yeah, yep. yeah, excellent. Um, so another emerging area, of course, is the, the micro LED industry. True. Uh, what, True. what sort of things are happening there? Actually, that, that's quite interesting because for micro LEDs, it's a it's a very good point that you mm. that you're actually talking here. Um, so micro LEDs, it's uh, again something. 
very heterogeneous, right? So mm -hmm. it's it's always dyes, material sources from two different wafers. You always have yeah. to somehow integrate the compound semiconductor in the best way uh, onto CMOS. That's really mm -hmm. one of the cores. Um, that's one application point, right? So what we are re referring to is uh, basically what we are calling micro displays, right? So mm -hmm. yeah. it, it means that you have to go to a very high uh, DPI. So we're talking about 2,000 or more, so even right. up to 20,000 uh, pixels per inch. So wow. very high density. Mm -hmm. <coughs> and for that high density, hybrid bonding is, for example, a very suited solution, mm -hmm. um, mainly on, 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 on wafer to wafer. Wafer, yeah. On the other hand, um, there are also different solutions where you're, for example, generating micropixels and then transferring it on a backplane. And there are different technologies how to produce the, 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 uh, the, the micropixels are used, but you also have to use temporary bonding or other technologies in order to generate such carriers. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So also here, it's very ideal so, to have such a center because there is no, <coughs> there is no solution yet right. for micro LEDs, which is completely established in the market, right? Mm -hmm. So you have to try different things, what fits best to your product. And there's such an incubator has a lot of sense for our customers. It makes yeah, a lot of sense yeah. for our customers. There's so many challenges in the, in the micro is. LED world yeah. with, with materials and things, uh, you know, ge generating heat and affecting even the luminance of the, of the, of the LEDs themselves. Uh, yes. I mean, it's, yep. it's, it's, it really is quite a challenge. Uh, so it's great to hear that you've, you've got these things. So typically what sort of um, customer, uh, you know, a customer's a project uh, and they would, they, they would approach you, um, how, how, how would it work for the customer? Actually, so it, it always, most of the time it starts with a request from a customer, right? Mm -hmm. Where we can start either on a short demo basis to see, okay, how are we collaborating? Where is it, it actually leading to with them? Yeah. And then typically what we would do is to have, uh, to set up certain project milestones, right? Or a bigger project with a certain milestone, with certain uh, milestones along the way also. Mm -hmm. um, and that can be tuned from customer to customer. Whatever is the request, we, as being said, we so we are very flexible in the models okay. that we that we can, can apply and, and work right. together. Okay, so and finally, Thomas, I mean, I guess that this uh, heterogeneous uh, uh, lab is, is in, in your headquarters in, in Austria. Yes. Uh, but uh, do you have anything o over here, planned here, or? Um, yeah, we, we we have our demo infrastructures where mm -hmm. we can also, if it fits, so the the most complete tool park is in our clean rooms in Austria. We mm -hmm. we invested heavily here to expand that clean room to have more offering to to get the centers bigger and bigger, the service offerings that yeah. we can do for the customers. Um, here in in the US, we have in Tempe, Arizona, at the mm -hmm. at the facility of the ASU. Okay. We have also a demonstration lab, which is uh, quite well suited for 200 millimeter wafers. Mm -hmm. So a lot of processes can be also done here. Um, mm -hmm. And in principle, also the same service offerings, whatever is supported with the infrastructure can be applied worldwide. Mm -hmm. Another clean room we also have is, for example, in Yokohama, okay. in Tokyo. Yeah. Um, and so whatever fits best worldwide for the customer basis mm -hmm. or where the customer wants to do the service, we can, we can mm -hmm. offer. Great, great. Well, it sounds it sounds uh, really quite exciting, some of the work you're doing. So I want to thank you for uh, letting us come in and talk about it today. Thank you.